Hi, this is Dr. K from iMedical School, and today I want to continue our series regarding the brachial plexus. Make sure to check out our other free educational videos at our YouTube channel, iMedical School. Follow us on Twitter at iMedSchool and Facebook at iMedical School to stay up to date on our most recent videos, practice questions, and med bites of the week. On the last video, we went over how the brachial plexus is split into sections called roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and terminal branches. We talked about the origins of the brachial plexus in the nerve roots C5 to T1, and we talked about the three nerves that branch early on in the brachial plexus. Today, we're going to advance that discussion by talking about the trunks and divisions of the brachial plexus. As we discussed previously, the roots of the brachial plexus consist of C5, 6, 7, 8, and T1. These roots course between the anterior scalene and medius or middle scalene muscles. As they pass between these muscles, they form the trunks. There are three trunks, superior, middle, and inferior. The superior trunk is created by C5 and C6. The middle trunk is created by C7, and the inferior trunk is created by C8 and T1. These trunks pass parallel and deep to the posterior triangle. The posterior triangle is created by the sternocleidomastoid anteriorly, trapezius posteriorly, and the clavicle inferiorly. The floor of the posterior triangle is created by the anterior scalene, middle scalene, levator scapulae, and splenius capitis. There are two nerve branches that arise from the superior trunk of the brachial plexus. The first is the suprascapular nerve. The suprascapular nerve contains innervation from C5 and C6. It courses through the posterior triangle and dives deep to the trapezius muscle. The suprascapular nerve runs along the superior border of the scapula. It then dives through the supraspinatus fossa and gives branches to the supraspinatus muscle. The suprascapular nerve then courses along the border of the lateral scapula into the infraspinatus fossa. The nerve places branches and innervates the infraspinatus muscle. The supraspinatus muscle originates from the scapula and inserts into the greater tubercle of the humerus. Based on the origin and insertion of the supraspinatus muscle, you can imagine that it plays a role in abducting or lifting the arm away from the body. In addition, the supraspinatus muscle prevents the arm from falling inferiorly. The supraspinatus is one of the three muscles that are grouped as the rotator cuff muscles. The second muscle supplied by the suprascapular nerve is the infraspinatus and is the second muscle in the group of rotator cuff muscles. The infraspinatus muscle originates on the infraspinous fossa of the scapula and inserts into the greater tubercle of the humerus. The infraspinatus aids in the external rotation of the humerus with the help of teres minor, which is one of the other rotator cuff muscles. The second nerve that arises from the superior trunk is a subclavius nerve or nerve to the subclavius. The subclavius nerve, like the suprascapular nerve, is composed of innervation from C5 and C6 roots. The nerve to the subclavius passes anterior to the brachial plexus and subclavian artery to innervate the subclavius muscle. The subclavius muscle originates at the first costochondral joint and inserts into the subclavian groove on the inferior aspect of the clavicle. Given its origin from the first costochondral joint and insertion both posteriorly and superiorly into the clavicle, when it contracts, it moves the clavicle both anteriorly and inferiorly. Overall, this is a small muscle that has no major muscle function. However, it does play a large role in protecting the subclavian vessels and brachial plexus from a subclavian bone fracture. In the section of trunks, the only two nerve branches are the supraclavicular nerve and the nerve to the subclavius. 
once the trunks pass through the posterior triangle and under the clavicle, they then transition to the divisions. There are three anterior divisions and three posterior divisions. There are no nerve branches that originate from the divisions. The importance of the divisions is that the nerve roots essentially mix together, which helps set up the development of the numerous nerve branches we will talk about in the next two videos. Well, that was the second video in our series about the brachial plexus. In the next video, we will discuss the cords and the nerve branches that arise from them. If you like this video, give it a like. Make sure to share this video with your friends and classmates. If you have any questions or comments, place them down below, and most importantly, subscribe. This is Dr. K from iMedical School, and I'll see you next time.